me first officially welcome Sarah to being with us and you know thank you so much for coming and so um, it's like I mentioned it's, there's nothing better than you know to work with real players so I just told Sarah that when we do the readings that she's going to give you her honest feedback on what works what it feels like to play your pieces and you know that's what we need as composers like I said it's just you know we need to know what makes you know makes your face turn red or what drives you crazy and also vice versa, you know, what, what you really enjoy to play and so how we can write a piece well. Um, what I was thinking of, maybe we could start off with, is that, you know, me and Sarah were talking before, um, and one of the things I'm a big believer of is that, you know, there's not just the instrument, but there's the performer that you can write for myself or Emmanuel Axe behind the piano and you're going to get two <laughs> totally different results. So, maybe Sarah, can you just tell us like to, just a little bit about your musical background, um, yeah. like what what's, you know, styles, genres you play so we get a little sense of, you know, like who you are as a musician? Yeah, because I, I immediately came in and was apologizing for myself. I felt like, well, there's things that I can do that other people can't do, there's things that other people can do that I can't do. But, um, so my background. Um, I went to San Francisco Conservatory of Music for my undergrad, wow. and then I went to California Institute of the Arts for my master's, mm -hmm. where I focused, um, so obviously the conservatory focused on classical music, mm -hmm. but mostly contemporary classical, which okay. is you know, more modern. Um, and, uh, and then I, at CalArts, I focused on um, improvisation. So, um, uh, as a result, I, uh, I I tried. I just felt like it was my goal to be able to do anything on the bassoon. Mm -hmm. I didn't want. I played clarinet and saxophone before, but I felt like, uh, why? I don't really enjoy playing either of those instruments, and I'd rather just do everything on this one instrument instead. So that's that's been that was my that was my burning goal through my. 20s and 30s. Yeah, am I correct in assuming you're pretty unique in that you're a bassoonist who improvises? Yeah, yeah, there's a handful of us. Uh -huh. I feel like we all pretty much know each other. So yeah, there isn't a lot of us and, um, and it's because of that it's kind of, I've had an interesting journey with um, you know, I, it's nice to be able to um, you get called for recording work and orchestra work, but also jazz ensembles. They can they go on tour, and it, it's nice. So you're comfortable in a lot of cool. genres. And I am. I mean, I am not gr a great bebop player. I know there's other bassoonists that are really good bebop players. I just never felt like that was that did not speak to me. So, on the bassoon, it's, uh, bassoon is hard. Um, it's hard to get around. It's kind of a clunky instrument as far as that's concerned because there's so many keys you can see that there's many many keys for your thumbs well, maybe so you things on perfect can you start there how's the how's the actual keys how are the keys laid out on the percent well um the low notes it, it it's all this is all this is all the low end of the bassoon all of these eight keys here mm -hmm. and then these um are mostly other than c sharp these are um, and the whisper key, um, these three are that's for the high notes. So it gets a little, it, the fingering gets very strange. Like, it's very similar to clarinet and saxophone and flute in the respect that it's got six holes, and when you're playing around those notes, it's very similar to those instruments. It's when you go um, to an octave, so there's two octaves that are like that, right in the middle of the horn. And then when you go to the two octaves above and the one octave below, that's when it starts getting a little snarly. And that's actually where a lot of the, well, I think the instrument is, the whole instrument, the whole, all of it is beautiful, but because of its huge range, that's where the beauty lies. And I think be able to get, have that huge range, there's, it, it's touching upon all these harmonics to be able to, so you're, it's almost like a string instrument playing a harmonic where you're closing, you know, you're doing something like that. It's, you're venting this key, this key, this key, and then you're getting a harmonic of this other note, but it's actually the note. That's sort of sort of like what it is. And what's anyway. the lowest note you can play? So the lowest note is in, in uh, I can't. Yeah, the lowest note is um, B flat. B flat below the bass tap. Yes, B flat below the bass tap, which is this. Oh, drop. 
dry. Too much talking. <laughs> Not enough light, too much talking. <laughs> That note is really special because everything on the whole instrument, obviously, to be able to be the lowest note, everything, every single thing is closed, so it's just shooting right out the bell. So because of that, it's got a very direct sound. Same with B, which is just this one is open, which to me is the loudest note on the instrument. So you can really like uh, it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> And in that register, what's the what's the softest dynamic? I mean, you can obviously go oh, loud. you can do. Uh, but on that, like, say, like the B flat, what's the lowest you? you, you maybe that whole like, range from B flat, really the perfect fifth of a B flat to yeah. F, which is. Um, no, I'm sorry. 